slash Snapbolt. My name is Max, and this is Loon, and we're here with another Vintage Cube Draft, uh, trying to get Loon in some more content. He's a solid drafter here, so we'll see how long he hangs out for. Um, here's our pack one, pick one. This pack looks good. There's a lot of nice cards. Um, I'm going to take Fractured Identity. I think this card is still underrated. Hey, come on, B, let's hang out for at least for a minute. Come on, bud. Um, yeah, I think this card's underrated. Counterspell is good. Path is good. Primeval Titan's good. Um, I think those are the other cards I would consider. Um, like taking out of this pack would be Path, Prime Time, Counterspell. Um, not Wooded Foothills, actually. I do really like Fetches, but Fracture Identity is great. So gonna gonna slam that. And I think Loon's ready to be out of here already. So he's not gonna hang out for too long. Too good. I know we just passed Path. We could take Bribery, just take two five drops, but I think I just take Plow. Maybe I'm supposed to take Colonnade, but wow, there's a lot of good blue and white cards, which kind of sucks in a way because we're like passing a good blue and white signal, but yeah, I'm just gonna take Plow here. Mm. Bribery is strong, but yeah, I'm not sure. I think Plow is just so nice to have. It's just such a good safety net. Just take Plow. You can't go wrong with Plow, right? Shellrock is great, but I think I'm going to take Coalition Relic. That leaves us open to playing three or four colors. It's just a good card, even if we're just blue-white. And um, this card just consistently goes a little bit later than it should. It's really good. Snap that up. All right, pick four. Things have fallen off a little bit. I guess I just take Thieving Skydiver. I do like Basalt Monolith. Gataxian Probe's fine. Chandra would be good. But then we're going to another color. And Skydiver, I think, actually is really strong um, in Vintage Cube Draft because everyone has moxes and stuff. So three mana, two one flying, steal your mox is, is great. And you can seal other stuff with it too. So I'm just going to snap off a Skydiver there. All right, wow, a lot of these mana artifacts going around. I could just take Worm Coil because that's like gonna be fine in any deck we end up in. Dynamo is really good, but yeah, I think that's a pretty easy Worm Coil for me. Hmm. I can take, I think it's between Dynamo and Worm. I don't think it's Spell Pierce. I think I'm just gonna slam this Worm. All right, things definitely fell off here. There's nothing that really goes with like what we have at all. There's a Tezzeret, which I just don't think seems very good. There's a Dryad, there's a Legion's Landing, Scooze, I guess we could take. I think I just take Dark Six Shore in the chance that I end up Esper. Um, it's just another good land. I don't think there's anything else that's really standing out to me. Scooze isn't even that great. I think if it wasn't Dark Slick, I'd just take Tezzeret, but that's not where I want to be either. Ooh, I do like Time Warp a lot. I think that's better than Solemn. Solemn actually like has been slightly underwhelming for me recently. I just I think it's fine in certain decks, but yeah, a little underwhelming. Chart of course is also decent, but definitely gonna slam the time walk over it. Time warp over it. Hmm. Could take one of these white cards. We're not even that committed to white. We only have a fracture identity and a plow right now. I could take a Gruel Signet or even a Fast Bond. I don't, I don't really like Fast Bond. Gruel Signet is just like color, all the colors that we are not. I wonder if I take Armageddon? Armageddon's kind of weird, but maybe we get a bunch of artifact mana. Wow, ECD still here? It's another 5 drop. Wooded Foothill still here as well. Force Thousand Year Storm going around. Let's see. I couldn't hear you as well. I hear you doesn't seem great. I'll just ECD. I don't want to move into red for Nahiri. Wow, Colonnade and Worn Power Stone? Alright, here I would I would want Worn Power Stone, but I think I'm supposed to colonnade. I need I need I need fixing for blue and white. I can't pass the colonnade. Sucks to pass the Worm Power Stone, but I, I need to call an aid. Um, 
could take Flounder or Omnath. I'll just take Omnath just in case. In case my fixing gets like really good somehow, which most likely it will not. I don't know why Lapse of Certainty is in the cube. I guess I could take it. Maybe I want it in the sideboard rather than a random black leaf glyph. So I'm pretty solidly blue white at this point. I can splash, but maybe O Stone wouldn't be that bad. I could play that repeal if I have to, but not a bad, not a bad uh, first pack. We didn't get power or anything, but opening the fracture identity was nice. All right. Wow, this seems like a pretty big miss. There's nothing good here at all. There's like literally nothing good. Feral isn't good. Like, do I have to first pick Wrath of God? Uh, and I can take Plateau. God damn. Could take Concealed Courtyard just in case we want to end up splashing black. Now we have two black lands. I think I just take Wog. That's so bad. A lot of times I don't even end up playing Wog anymore. I think that's better than Plateau or Courtyard, though. Just to make sure I have it. Brutal. That was bad. So, I can take a Scalding Tarn in case I end up getting a blue-white land. I can take a Creeping Tar Pit. But, again, I think I'm pretty solidly blue-white at this point. I'm taking the good blue-white control card. The good like cards that are good in the blue-white control archetype, so I think I just take Council of Judgment. could also pick Urza. Maybe Urza is better than Council of Judgment. I don't have artifacts to use with it yet, but it's still a fine card. Mm, Council of Judgment is a really good answer. I'll, I'll take it over Urza here. I'm, I'm not sure about that. If we had more artifacts, I'd be more inclined to take Urza, but I'll Council of Judgment. I know we don't have much that many blue cards yet, but I still think I'm going to take Cryptic. Well, that's weird. It was still auto-selected on Questing Beast, but it outlined like a Cryptic. And then we can wheel one of these white cards, maybe. Like, I'm fine to play a Wall of Omens or a Mana Tithe. Spellseeker not looking great. So, yeah, I'll snap off this Cryptic. Wow, the Treachery. Nice. I mean... This deck seems open. We're getting a lot of the expensive stuff. We're going to want, like, if we can get, like, a Signet or something, but definitely going to take Treachery, Battle Ball, Signet, Gideon, not as good as Treachery. Slam it. There's a Workshop, which only casts a Relic and Worm Coil for us right now. Uh, but this card's strong. I don't think I can splash, like, a twin or anything in my deck. I don't want to take Deceiver. Don't want Sword. I guess I can just take Walking Ballista and maybe just play it. Maybe not. I think that's better than taking Workshop. We just don't really have many artifacts yet. And then two decent artifacts. We don't really have anything for Yorion yet. I don't know if I want another 5-drop for Gilded Bliss. Like, all my 5s are way better than Gilded Bliss. I think I'd just take Yurion and honestly, maybe companion it. Maybe just uh, play it or just... I think it's worth it to take it, though. We have a lot of playables. I wonder if this could be a deck where we play Yurion. Like, Yurion Companion not just in the main deck. I'll take a snap here. We have Plow, we have Cryptic. We can also just snap Wrath or something if we need to. It's a nice pickup for the deck. Uh, Frost Titan, Sun Titan, Orzhov Signet. I think I just take Frost Titan. Sun Titan gets back, like maybe snap, Council of Judgment. It's about it right now. Frost Titan's good. I think it's better than Orzhov Signet. But maybe I'm supposed to be taking the cheap card, consider I have all these fives. Alright, I already have so much good top end. I have ECD, Time Warp, Treachery, Fracture Identity, Worm Coil. Do I need, really need another six? I know this isn't a perfectly colored signet, but if I ramp into my fives, that's better than just having another six drop in my hand. So, I think that's definitely the pick. Now that I thought about it a little bit. I'll take Dismember. I can play Dismember. Put it in the right spot. 
we can even just splash this member off like Dark Slick Shores, Creeping Tarpet, and maybe one more source. Seems good to me. I mean, Tarpet's a nice card. I'll take it. Could also splash like a Heartless Act. Do I want guys for like the sideboard? Against combo and stuff? Or would I potentially want to be Esper and play Heartless Act? I don't like guys that much. I'll just Heartless Act and maybe we'll end up there. Mm, probably can't play any of these cards. Maybe I'm supposed to take Expansion Explosion, but I don't think I'm really ever boarding that in. Sure. Okay. I mean, this still looks decent. Again, we don't have, like, Power 9, but we have just, like, solid blue-white control cards, and I think this archetype is very good. Our deck is a little clunky, so if pack three we get some more like ramp, like maybe an Azorius signet and stuff, that'll help us a lot. Oh man. Our man is not good, but I think I'm just supposed to Oko. I could take Ancestral Vision or Elspeth Knight Aaron, but Oko is so strong that I think I'm supposed to just take it and then hope to get like a couple signets or some more lands later in this pack. If we don't play it, we don't play it. I'm missing out on Ancestral Vision or Knight Errant, but I guess and Delta. But yeah, I'm going to Oko. It's just too strong. Okay, that's a five fairy. Just infinite five drop dot deck, sure. Could also take Underground C, but my only real black card right now is Heartless Act and I guess Creeping Carpet, but five fairy I think is really, really good. Oh, third pick, Mox and Jay still in the pack. And Scarab God, Fatal Push. What? This must have been like a triple power pack or something. Like, or somebody either misclicked or. How is Jace and Mox Jet still in the pack? I guess it could have just been a double power pack. Like, Mox, Black Lotus. And then somebody wasn't blue, so they didn't want. Jeez, but then why wouldn't they take power? It must have been triple power, or somebody needed like to get twin for their combo or, or something weird. But third pick Mox Jet is uh, <laughs> a nice pickup to say the least. Shinobi doesn't seem good in our deck with only four creatures, so I think Mana Leak seems like exactly what we want. I would definitely want Ponder too, but I think Mana Leak's better. It's at least like interaction. Oh, nice. I was like, oh, I guess I could use a Rippling. That seems good, but Hallowed Fountain for sure. We, our mana's not great, so uh, pick up this Hallowed Fountain is a really nice pick up. Wow, three fairy, let's go. This deck is sick. Looks like we might just not play this Oko. We didn't really get any green fixing, at least yet, and we're not just going to play a bunch of forests for it. I mean, this is a bad balance deck, but balance is still a strong card. Alternatively, I can take like a Thinx for the sideboard or a Brain Freeze for the sideboard. Brain Freeze is actually a funny tech against Storm because you wait till they storm off and then you brain, you can Brain Freeze them. Um, could also take Commit to Memory. I don't think I even want to play that really. I think I take Balance and maybe just start it in the sideboard. And if they have like a bunch of creatures, then Balance actually gets pretty decent. I know you have to dis you might have to discard cards from your hand. But I still think it's worth. I don't think I'm playing this Armageddon either. Well, there is Crucible there, but... I wonder if I'm supposed to play Vents, Dark Slick Shore, Creeping Tarpet for Dismember and for the Man Lands. Could also just take Sower and then not play any of the black. That seems better to me. I also have a Mox Jet, actually. Yeah, Sower's good enough that I, that I just like want it just for a card. So unfortunately, I think that this is happening, and this just looks a lot more consistent. And yeah, we wield Ancestral Vision anyway. Sweet. I'll play Ancestral Vision. We're a little bit short on playables, it looks like, because this is only 20 playables. What do we have in the side? I mean, there's a lapse of certainty, a 
so yes i don't know what i was talking about with yorian we weren't even we're not even close to being able to play yorian and it doesn't really flicker that much stuff but yeah Benzer seems fine okay yeah like lumbering falls splashes oko but scarab god we already have the lands to splash that we already have two black lands a mox jet and an orzhov signet that's an easy scarab god and just play infinite five drops sure I don't think we can Shinobi. Maybe I maybe I want Chalice. Yeah, Chalice seems fine. It's a late Uro. I'll let somebody Marari conjecture. Let's get these uh black lands back in there. Oh, there's the last pick Brain Breeze. Wow. Storm was wide open. Alright. Let's get uh Dark Slick Shores. Creeping Tarpit back in. This is a land. This is a two drop. And this is basically a one drop. So probably want to play 18 mana sources. I think I want to play Dismember just to play another removal spell. Seems good to me. Definitely want to play Snapcaster Mage. We have Leak, Plow, Dismember, Council's Judgment, Cryptic. We have a lot. We have so many fives, I definitely want to play 18 mana sources plus these signets and relic. Like we need to be flooded on mana like pretty much every game. But there's also Heartless Act, which we have a lot of sources for. That's just like a two mana kill almost anything. Almost everything doesn't have counters. I think I can safely cut Ballista. I could I could cut Venser as well. I don't think I want to cut ECD just because I have like a lot of good, I guess not a lot of good Planeswalkers, but I have some good Planeswalkers. It sucks to not be able to play this Oko, but we just have no green fixing at all. The Black Splash is pretty much free. I could play one Swamp just to have, an, just to have a Swamp. I like playing the Heartless Act though, I think. Just another removal spell seems good to me. But maybe because it's black, I just play Venser instead, just so I have less black cards. All right, all right, all right. Then I maybe don't even need to play Swamp. Because then I have three black sources right now, which is enough for Scarab God. I won't be able to activate Tarpit that much, but I think the Scarab God is really good. Infinite Fives is not ideal, but is what it is and let's sort by color so these are blue and white this is our only black spell this is colorless basically let's count um, the blue sources one two three four and then how many white sources one two three we have coalition relic as well so four blue sources three white right now so our mana is going to be pretty bad so that's 10 8 yeah 10 8 seems i mean not good it's bad but um is what it is at least we have a lot of mana so we can just slowly play a lot of lands and get mana sources that way too oh wait oh two swamps totally miscalculated there oops yeah that's uh just like fucking up here just add one more of each. So that's actually 11, 9. So 11 blue sources, 9 white sources. That sounds a lot better. Okay, that sounds more realistic. Okay, that seems good. And then let's take a screenshot of the deck. This is actually a one drop. This is a one drop as well. I 100% recommend doing this. Just snipping tool or any other, just take a screenshot. You don't even have to save it. Just keep it there for a second while you play your matches. And then you can always be like, okay, what are my outs? Anytime you're like, okay, so I have four outs. And then you can look through your list. And it's just so much easier when you can like see your list in front of your face like this. So, oh wait, oh wait, wait, wait. What is happening here? 19 lands? Why did it... Oh, oh, okay, god damn, I almost just fucked up. <laughs> so what happened was I didn't see that the two swamps were in there. And then I added the basics. 
and then um it like it almost added like i i took the swamps out and then added more basics because i thought it was up to 40 but then it was up to 42 so one two three four five six seven i have to double check seven one two three four five six that's seven six so that's seven eight nine ten eleven eleven blue six seven eight eight white sources nine eleven nine okay yeah this is what it's supposed to be no no swamps man i almost just really like fucked up there pretty bad so this is 17 land mox jet so 18 land essentially that's where we want to be god damn that was rough let's go around one let's hope we don't fuck up like that in the games one after almost registering 42 cards and 20 mana sources uh, we barely dodged that bullet and let's play first all right let's not keep this in a lot of mana again we want to have a ton of mana because we have so many vibe drops in our deck like now our draws moving forward are just so good because yeah we have more mana sources we can draw but we have so many five drops to draw that like our average draw is going to be really powerful and we can cast them hopefully a little ahead of schedule here oh are we just getting like turn one tinkered turn one basalt monolith scary fractured identity is good uh, multi hitter one not exactly a turn one six mana like the opponent has, but our deck can't really do that type of stuff. But we have like a lot of just powerful five drops. Our best one that we just drew. So if they play something good, you know, by a fairy, it's actually not bad for us. If we're able to resolve fractured identity, it's obviously great. Take their to fairy, but if they counter this, that's where it gets kind of rough. Cryptic. Cryptic's good. Coalition Relic Pass. And then most likely next turn, I'm, I just go, wow, they can even untap Basalt Monolith. That's a pretty nice interaction here. Basalt Monolith plus Teferi. I mean, T2 Teferi Hero of Dominaria is going to be pretty hard to beat, even though they're on the draw. Like they get two extra draws to draw interaction for our fracture identity, but the good news is if they play some creature threat here, like it's like a one of creature threat, I get to fracture identity this, and then I can even minus on their creature. Let's see, are they getting batter skull? Yep. Are they gonna play batter skull? I still take their Teferi if I can with Fractured Identity. And then maybe tuck the Batter Skull if I can. Oh, they're tucking this. That's actually okay. I'll just put a charge counter for fun. And then I'll try to Fractured Identity the Five Fairy. Are they gonna just play Batter Skull? They don't want to. Okay, hopefully they don't have a counter spell. I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for the fracture identity, I think. I don't wanna let them have any more turns with five fairy. They have one blue up, so they could have mana leak or something. Nice. I don't think I even tuck Stone Forge, because next turn they can just go they'll pass the turn or violin batter skull, and then I can just time warp. It's just plus. Maybe I draw swords or something? No. I think I'm just going to untap Island Island and rep like I have like counter. Counterspell would be nice. I mean, our pack one pick one was Fractured Identity versus Counterspell, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. I may be thinking of a different draft, but Counterspell would, would be a huge add to this deck. They've lost, have they lost every flip? Shell Dock. Okay. So we know they have Batter Skull in hand. Lingering Souls. That's fine. 
The fact that I get the time warp with my fairy in play here is just insane. Wow, they they tapped like that. They didn't want to use this. They because they oh no they couldn't. They only had one white source. Okay, well this is fine. There's the coalition relic. That's plus. Worm coil. Okay, well I'm still time warping here. Land, so that's six mana. So I can go coalition relic. I can't go coalition relic into time warp, unfortunately. So I just have to do just I just have to time warp. I think it's worth it to do it now. Just ticking this up. Seems good. Scarab God. I can actually cast that, although it doesn't really do that much yet. It's just plus. Well, Snapcaster Time Warp. Sign me up. Can we just like ult this to fairy? This is sweet. Fractured Identity there to fairy and then start taking extra turns. Target me. Flashback Time Warp. That is so sick. Yeah, sure, we get to untap lands. Just not going to do any. Here's a Hallowed Fountain. Let's just keep drawing. There's a three fairy. So I have six, seven, potentially eight mana. So what I can do is I can play Worm Coil and then leave up Cryptic. Then I can plan to tap their team, draw with Cryptic. I can even... Oh wait, I can just play, I don't need to play Worm Coil, I can just play Teferi, then that way they can't interact with my Cryptic. That's gotta be the, that's gotta be the line. So let's go three Fairy. I think I can just plus three Fairy, I don't think I need to bounce, I could bounce this Alt Monolith to be safe. All right, why don't I do that? Just take them down a bunch of mana, and then I can tap, and then I can ult uh, five Fairy and win that way. Um, if I play Coalition Relic and Untapped Land, I'll still have Cryptic up. Or I can even play Tap Land. Because I get to untap two lands with, with Five Fairy. So I can just even play this tapped. They can't interact with me because I have a Three Fairy down. No need to attack. Just go to my N7 on tap two lands. Yeah, and then at their beginning of combat, I just tap down their team draw. They lost the flip again. Not that it, their flips don't really matter that much. I mean, we kind of just took over the game. Are they just putting in batter skull? No, they're casting something. So I can go counter whatever this is, tap their team. Council of Judgment? No. Counter target spell, tap all creatures your opponent controls. Okay. That was pretty convincing. They did not have the interaction they needed, and then we just took two extra turns. Yeah, it looks good. In the mirror, do I want anything else like a lapse of certainty? I don't know if putting anything on top is even that great. Lapse of certainty is just a pretty bad card. I mean, I think I want dismember and stuff just to deal with like a stone forge. Hmm. I have 16 mana sources left in my deck and I'm on the draw. Sure. I have skydiver, I have three fairy, I have my mocks. I think I keep this. I have 11 blue sources as well. There, there we go, nice. I think I'll play Mox and play Island. I guess I should have played Island first. Pass. Next turn I'll probably just jam Time Raveler. If they play a one drop artifact, I'll try to, I'll steal it. 
I'm gonna just jam three fairy here. And plus. Because then if they play anything else, then I can bounce. If they play an artifact, like a basalt mono next turn, then I can bounce it. And if they don't play anything next turn and I need to draw land, I can minus the fairy just on nothing to draw land. Well, we hit land. We didn't hit a blue source. So I wonder if I'm supposed to minus the fairy to try to have Venser up. I don't think so. Because I hit a land there, I'll just plus again. Now I can minus the fairy twice on the next two turns if I need to. Like, yeah, it's annoying if they have Council of Judgment, but I feel like they would have played that last turn if they had it. Four mana. Chase. No, oh, Faith stutters that. Okay, that's annoying. Especially because I can't Venser it. I do still have it on six, though, so I think we'll deal with Faith Betters at some point. Alright. Now I'll pass. Scarab God's also not insane because there won't be many creatures going to the yard, but I still think it's good enough. Gideon make a 2-2. Two -two. Sure. Gideon's good. Charge Gunner, Island. Blue mana. So I have some options. I can like, I can Venser Balance Fates Fetters, but that's not that good. I can Treachery the Knight and untap my lands. And then I can if they go to make Gideon a creature, I can Venser bounce it. Or I can even like Venser bounce the Gideon right now just to get it out of there. I think I kind of like that. Treachery the Knight, just because I'm not sure what else I'm going to be able to Treachery. And it's a good tempo play. And then Venser bounce Gideon just so they have to just like spend their entire turn recasting it. I think I'm going to do that. Treachery this, because I'm not sure what else I'm even going to be able to treachery. This is just like a one mana steal your knight. Untap my lands. And then... Do I just fence this now? Is there, is there any chance they're going to just try to activate this and attack? I guess what I can do also, they might make a 2-2, and then I can fence or bounce the 2-2. And then attack four at Gideon. And if they try to make it a creature, then I can bounce Gideon then. And I have Teferi passive out still. So, yeah, pretty broken. Face fetters on Teferi, actually not even that good now that I think about it some more. They make a 2 2. Okay, see, I can just Vencer bounce this and then try to kill Gideon. Soul Ring resolves. And nothing else okay well they can't interact now so this is just like insanely good for me i bounce token kill gideon and then i'm like set basically and then i can just slam scare god that can't be countered because of teferi this is somewhat of a mirror but seems like our deck is just better maybe we're just drawing better who knows our mana is not that good also so we could draw bad mana in the future um, I guess I just add blue, uh, black, four mana, five mana. Oh, I want to, I want to, maybe I just don't even need to uh, scare a god. I can just get Skydiver their soul ring. Or I can do both. I think I just do both. And, I mean, Wrath of God's not even that bad for me. Oh, they just leave it untapped. Here. 
I guess I shouldn't have tapped my Mox Jet because now I have to tap Coalition Rogue, but it's really not the end of the world. Epic Bear Dead. Scarab God, tap land, and then attack Gideon. Sweet. I think we, in the end, took a pretty decent line there. Yeah, Wrath of God was something I was thinking about that would be annoying, but we at least get our Scarab God back. And then I just get to replay it. Oh yeah, I have to tap like this. And I actually do have Cryptic up still. Scarab God, pretty, pretty good. Also, taking the opponent's soul ring, not bad. Cryptic's a nice one. Nursing it resolves. Control magic? I'll just counter draw. BCD. Sweet. I could have also like Scarab Godded Vents or something, but I can do that next turn. I don't think I want to Vents or anything. Or I guess maybe I should have. Oh no, I can't kick this from Scarab God. But that's okay. Seems like this is over. Don't make me eat my words, opponent. End of turn, I can just make a Venser and a Skydiver. Coalition Rogue resolves. And this is going to get Venser, most likely, yeah. Venser. Bounce the council's judgment. And then I'll skydiver as well. Then I get to scry two and drain for two. Then I okay, yeah, it's game. So I have to let this resolve. Time warp target me. And then attack. Sweet. Pretty decisive to a victory there. Let's go round two. Oh, to round two. Actually, I'm going to keep this hand. Just we have four mana sources. We have good five drops. If we draw planes, it's great. I'm feeling the uh, I'm feeling the three of this draft. I say that as I'm probably just about to get either mana read slash destroyed here, but um, still feeling it. Okay, what is trying into breeding pool? Are they straight blue green? Are they bent? Are they four color? Five color? We don't know. What you got? Brainstorm into another fetch lane, perhaps? They resolve brainstorm relatively quickly. Fetch land? Okay. Maybe they're bug? Thoughtsies? Elf. Okay. Where's our white sources? Come on, deck. Planes. Okay, that's a white source. Ask and you shall receive. Next turn I can play uh, a chalice on X equals 2, which is actually pretty nice in this deck. We, we want a lot of mana. Okay. 
opponent was able to sculpt their hand with Brainstorm, but... Ooh, Chromox. Exiling... What is that? Regrowth? Into Whisperwood. Flames? Sower. Okay, I'll take Sower. <laughs> that was a nice draw. I can Sower their Whisperwood. I guess I can sack it. Or oh, they have six. Oh, man. Why would you have six? <laughs> can we manifest a Mox? That's such a bad mistake from the opponent. Now if they kill this, I can sack Whisperwood. That's such a big mistake. They go LOL. LOL that they were F6? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should, should have sacked. Yeah, death. They definitely should have sacked. That's like such a big mistake from the opponent. Imperial Seal, sure. Now I just get to start manifesting every turn. Until end of turn, face up non-token creatures gain when they die and manifest. So I can also do a line of like, potentially Wrath of God, sack my stolen Whisperwood, and then my Sower will manifest. Or whatever else I have. Dismember on top. Interesting. So they're going to dismember my seller? That doesn't really work. Because now I just sack Whisperwood and then I even get to manifest this when it dies. Why is this like highlighted? Come on, Magic Online. What are you doing? What are you doing, Magic Online? So White Source is, is still good. Any land is good because then I can Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. They Imperial Sealed for Dismember? It's interesting that they didn't just like have any powerful like six drop to get. I can also go if I draw a land, treachery this into something else, like into Chalice on two. We'll see what I we'll see what I draw. Yeah, that's so funny. Imperial seal for dismember. I can just sack Whisperwood when they try to dismember this. Maybe they're still not thinking about that. If they try to dismember Sower and I sack Whisperwood in response, are they going to concede? What's what's your bet? <laughs> There's planes. Okay. So now my line is either Treachery, Courser, into Chalice on 2, or play ECD, or... Playing ECD is not bad. Because then when my sower dies, I'll be able to get it back sooner. And I still exile Courser. But also playing Teferi right now and just drawing more cards seems really good. I can't treachery into Teferi. I'm going to take kind of a weird line and just play uh, ECD. Yeah, they're just f 6 Okay. And then I manifest again. We know they're drawing Dismember. And then I can just, when they try to Dismember Sower, I'll just sack Whisperwood. So weird that they got Dismember. These tutors to on top aren't that great. I guess I could have just not sacked this. But I, I guess I had to because they were getting Whisperwood back. So yeah, I, I had to. What am I saying? Pulling an opponent. <laughs> opponent says, Dev not paying attention to this game concedes. So who bet that they were going to concede in response to uh, sacking Whisperwood? <laughs> Trust me, opponent, we've, we've all been there. Watch some of my read-in videos. I have some pretty bad puns. It, ha it happens to all of us. Okay, um, they're kind of like green, bug, rampy type stuff. I mean, I guess balance seems good, right? Being able just to wrath their board. 
uh, could take out Venser. Could take out Ancestral Vision just because it might be a little slow. I'll just take out Venser. They should have a lot of mana, and Venser and like their five drop back to their hand might not always be that great. I know there's some lines like we did against Gideon where you bounce something and then attack and do that Venser kind of stuff, but. I think I want the balance. They show the Lanor Elf, Corsair of Crucifix, that type of stuff. Or I just may want another Wrath, even if I have to discard two or three cards. Sometimes they go creature, 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 and then you go like balance, even discard three or four cards. But you're like, okay, we're both on two cards, both on two lands, and you have like an eight drop in hand, and then you can keep playing lands. So I like balance. Also, I mean, we have four artifacts, so if we draw a couple artifacts and we just ramp out like a n nice balance with not many cards in hand, uh, it can be nice. The other thing where balance is nice is um, you mulligan to like four or five, and then your hand is like island, island, plains, balance, and then you just T2 balance, and they they don't have a hand. Uh, and they have, probably have to sack a creature or two, so I definitely like having balance in my deck against uh, decks like the opponent has. All right, game two. I'm gonna keep this hand too. Turn one ancestral. Hopefully, turn four wrath. That should be pretty solid. Fracture identity, just so strong. This is so much better than mind control. It's like or control magic, even than treachery. Just because a lot of things have entered the battlefield effects now, you get that enter the battlefield effect, and you deal with their permanent while getting one for yourself, but they can't like kill the control magic or the treachery to get their thing back. They're, they just have to kill their thing again. So a lot of times you get like an ETB effect or a planeswalker activation, and then they still have to kill it. So it's like almost like a three for one. And we'll just lead on suspending that. I like to have it open just so I can uh, just see it ticking down, just so I uh, remember exactly when it's coming off. Nice to have it just visually there. I guess I can do this too. Actually, weirdly, don't like that as much. All right, signet is fine. Take down. Signet or chalice? No, it's okay. Opponent's deck doesn't seem bad. I had some games the other night, I was kind of doing the same thing, I was just really misplaying. I, like, I don't even want to get into it, but it was, it was bad. It happens to everyone. Alright, they hit land on top. They gain a life. Did they shuffle away that Sylvan Library, or do they want to draw it? I feel like they want to draw it. It seems like it's obviously really good in this matchup. Tick down, and then go land Coalition Relic. We want to draw more lands. Hopefully they just play like another creature or something next turn and I just get to go log. I like the other old art on Wrath of God better. Well, this one's not bad, just the other one I really like. It's just a classic one for me. I can basically play any of my spells next turn, but I can't double spell. So I can play Wrath, Teferi, Worm Coil or Fractured Identity, just depending on what the opponent does. I'm probably just going to have to ignore that Sylvan Library. Now opponent's like playing really slow. They're at 18 minutes, we're at 22.30. Are they going to fetch away the Southern Library? I feel like they should draw it. It's just something pretty annoying that I have to deal with. Or they can draw a lot of cards. Library. Yeah, I mean, their deck has good cards. A lot of fetches, Brainstorm. 
looks sweet, but it is annoying when your earphones are playing really slow. Okay, they get to play another land from the top if they want. It's like drawing a card, just going off with Corsair. It's no Oracle of Moldaya, but it's good. We have old on top. That's a decent one to fracture identity, even if they're going to get a trigger off it. Okay, so they know about Wog. Still fine that they know about it, though. I think if the opponent just like plays Sylvan Library and passes, I think I just play Teferi and Plus, because then if they want to play Leobold, I still have Wrath. Wrath is a good answer to Leobold, so I don't want to Wrath just the Corsair away. Don't particularly want to Fracture Identity to Corsair. And playing Worm Coil just seems like it gets answered fairly easily. Oh, they're going to leave. Oh, no, they can't leave old right now because then they just get logged. So we'll see. So then my. Oh, Uro. Okay. Uro is fine. They draw land, they get to play another land, and then they, they can also play a Sylvan Library. I guess they have to have a duel. They're just like bugger, basically. Yeah, and this is a library. This gets shuffled away. So we know we have old. Looming Marsh on top. Okay, it's not scary. I could even fracture identity the library, but I don't think I really want to. I think I'd rather just get five fairy down. Start drawing infinite. And then if they want to Leobold, then I can Wrath of God then. Okay, that takes down to one. That goes off next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to slam Teferi. Pretty obvious, I think. Teferi, all plus. And I get to untap lands. They don't know if I drew a counterspell. Slinging on top. Is it going to reveal the, the cards like it should? Corsair as they draw them or no? Probably not. So we know Blooming Marsh and Slinging. And I think that's all we know. Oh, and Leopold. So we know three cards in their hand, or three cards that they have access to. I mean, having like Fractured Identity plus Wrath of God here, like, makes it hard for them to commit anything like big to the board. So they drew two with Sylvan Library. Oh, and, okay, and Mem Drain. That's. Actually, what I did not want them to draw is a uh, drain. Because now they can fight over like our wrath or our fracture identity. Oh shit. Now they Leo now now they're gonna Leobold. And then I can't draw cards with Ancestral Vision. And then they counter my Wog. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight mana. And I can't, and I can't play Fracture Identity plus Wrath of God. So that's annoying. So I wonder if the play was supposed to be like Worm Coil. So I can't even draw off this. I'll just draw my one for Ancestral. Oh, Cryptic. Okay, so now I'm good. So I'll add blue mana. Because now I have eight mana, so I can go Wog plus Cryptic, their mana drain. And then that should be enough. And then I can draw afterwards. So they wrecked our Ancestral Vision, but um, as long as they don't have double counter here, 
I should still be fine. And then they mana drain this, and then I cryptic the mana drain. Counter draw. I can counter balance library. No, I'd rather draw. Yep, looks good. I'll draw. Drew this, right? Yeah, okay. Opponent says, wow. Play well, get rewarded, right? <laughs> now, now opponents complaining. It's like they just like punted. I feel like so bad in game one, and it's like this game is not over. They're saying what a luck. It's like, yeah, I got lucky to draw a cryptic, but you're still doing fine. You have slinging. You can just cast Uro. I mean, my hand is good. I have to ferry out still. I'm just not going to respond to them. Brainstorm. Sure. I don't want to get sucked into the salt. They brainstorm. They don't fetch. They kept a card with the library and they put one on top. Interesting. Okay, there's Whisperwood. So they probably won't make the same mistake again. There's no way they're going to F6 here. They didn't want to just Uro. Oh, I guess they can't really Uro into Fractured Identity. Or they don't know about Treachery, but... I would like to save Treachery for Uro, though. I'm going to have to do something. I can just play a Worm Coil. It's doing something now. I can also just tuck the Whisperwood. That's not that good against Library. Let's just draw. The Scarab God. The Scarab God is very good. Five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight mana. So I can't quite Scarab God plus like Exile Your Earl or We of Old. But I can play Worm Coil, add a charge counter, and then next turn Scarab God plus activate. It's got to be better than playing Scarab God right now, right? And I don't want to treachery this or Fracture Identity because then they'll actually sack. It's just the land. Yeah, there's no way they're f 6 And then I'm just going to play... Oh, wait. I can play Scarab God and activate because... Um, because I can untap lands with Teferi. So I think actually what I do is I, this is actually really sick. So I go Scarab God, and then I exile Leovold, and then um, on my end step, and then they can Uro if they want, but they don't even get to draw off of it. And then um, I can Treachery the Uro. So, whoops, fucking sweet. Yeah, Scarab God, and then untap two lands, and then activate Scarab God. And here comes the complaint from the opponent. End step, untap two lands. And then activate target Leovold. Black. Stuff like that. Could have left white up to rep path or something, but I think this is fine. Now, if they activate Sylvan Library, they just get wrecked. Let's see if they do. If they do, they can see for sure. I, I call it, I call that. Oh, they did. <laughs> Wait, did they? Oh, maybe they didn't. It says it says El Loco is prevented from drawing cards. They cannot draw more than one card each turn. 
But don't they have to put two cards back? Maybe just the one card they drew they had to put back? I'm not sure. Okay, so this is a Uro, and they don't draw. And then I treachery the Uro. <laughs> Perfect. Everything's coming together, just like we drew it up. Everything's coming together, just like we drew it up. Let's go. They don't even draw because of Weevil. And they can't, like, really target any of my stuff. I, you knew they had to go for that because they don't want to get their Uro Scarab Godded and exiled either. We would have to sack it. We would only get an Uro trigger, but we would, like, basically stop them from doing this. But I wanted them to escape Uro because now I can just take it. Yeah, prevented from drawing. <laughs> Sick. They don't really have any attacks into my board. And I have Fractured Identity as well. Just waiting in the wings. Attack to Fairy? Why? Oh, oh they can, they're going to like flip it over into something else. Um, I don't want to lose my Weevold, but I don't care too much about Scarab God now. So if they want to flip over, they can. Island? What? That's weird. Oh, Garrick and then fight Scarab God? Sure. And then I draw for Leovold, and then Scarab God just comes back to my hand. I don't think this works like the opponent thinks it does. I just get Scarab God back anyway, and they manifest. Okay. That was weird. Opponent just not playing well here, it seems. I mean, I think they're dead. But, yeah, I still have Scarab God. Can't forget about that bottom two lines. When it dies, return it to its hand, owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Let's just go Island. Treachery this now. Sweet. And then... I guess I could have drawn first. ECD? Sure. I think I'll just ECD here. Yep, yeah, they don't they're F6. Opponent's just like like so salty right now. Not gonna attack. I mean, they could have an answer to this uh, treachery, but then I could just fracture identity. I suppose I could have played Warm Coil over ECD, but ECD just felt kind of safe. Like, even if they had sacked their thing, I still just kill it. And I guess that's better. If it, I guess they didn't want to sack it because then I could scare of God and then I can uh, make a token of whatever it's called, Whisperwood. So they're prevented from drawing. Are they saying yes to it or is this just coming up because of Moto? I'm, it's hard, It's just hard to tell sometimes. Varaska. Okay, resolves. They can't draw, so they can kill oh they kill the we of old okay so we draw off we of old and then we let that resolve now are they going to draw more cards oh just deranged from it okay that's fine i put a charge counter and then i can just fracture identity the, the deranged from it seems pretty nice. I won't be able to pay for the Echo, but I still get all the tokens and then their tokens are small. So then that way they can't deal with Uro. They're also at 16 cards in library and at 8 minutes. 
Do they still have slinging? Maybe. Not too concerned about that. It was lucky to draw the, the cryptic in order to, pr to protect the Wrath of God, but we may have had other lines to get around it. This card's been good this draft. This card's insane. Oh, nice. That's good insurance. Let's just add blue. Let's just lead on this. And then I think I do want to fracture identity this. It just seems safe. And then I get my tokens. And then one, two, three. Opponent says our deck is ridiculous. Yeah, our deck is good. <laughs> we have so many good five drops. Our, our deck is mono five drops. It's really good. Okay, now uh, I guess I just plus this. I could just bounce their manifest too. Okay, opponent is just again salting off like no other over there. Don't really want to repeat that last thing. Let's see. Land. I think I attack Varaska here. If they want to kill Uro, that's fine. Put a land into play. Oh, this still pumps their squirrels? I didn't realize it did that. I could have waited. But it's okay. We should be fine. If they want to trade all their squirrels, then, then that's okay with me. Opponent is just still going off. <laughs> I'm just not going to respond now. Just know El Loco not making a good name for themselves here. All right, I'll trade with all these. Yeah. And then I just play Scarab God. It was just a Mox Diamond. I mean, our deck's good, but it's like, it's very clunky. It's, it's really exploitable, actually. Um, so I don't know, like, how insane it actually is. I guess I could have just attacked with Earl first before doing other stuff, just to make sure I could exile their Earl. But again, if they if they escape Earl here, it's it's not the end of the world. I unfortunately don't really have anything to get back with this ECB, but if they kill one of my Planeswalkers, then I do. All right, they dealt with the Leobold, so they, they can draw cards now. They kept two cards from library. Wow, they're trying to go deep. They could have an Ugin or something to get out of this. Oko. Their deck's good. Their deck is good. They thought they had a sweet deck, and they do. They have a lot of Planeswalkers. They have Uro. Nebraska is not great, but Uro is really nice. Okay, they're making our Scarab got a 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. Uh, they're super scared of this. I can tuck their uh, Oko with my five fairy sling gang. Okay, they're they're not they're not dead yet. I mean we're looking still really good, obviously, but I can also bounce my Scarab God with my Teferi and replay it and then exile their Uro. <laughs> and that would be sweet might be down for that honestly oh did I forget to add mana or could I not do that I'm not sure like opponent is salty off so much like before the game is even like over their, their, their deck is good like they could have potentially got out of this but they're just spending all their time complaining it's like, why complain like that? Just have fun. If you make a mistake, it's okay. You, you got to just play through it. Okay, I can't pay for that. So I can't return anything with that. That also sucks. And I just draw a land. Okay. Let's 
So I can go bounce Scarab God, replay it, exile Uro. And then tuck Oko. Then they can just draw into Oko again. Which is kind of unfortunate. I think I want to plus this big Teferi actually. Just let them have Oko for now. Sower. Sower's decent. They might be up six as well. Um, let's start on just uh, Sower and see if they're F6. Oh, it looks like they are. Just take this then. I don't know why opponent is just F6ing, and maybe it's because they're out of time, but it doesn't make sense to me. Um, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Okay, so now I just go. I think I will do this line. Just leave them with Oko in play. That's fine. Bounce this. Replay it. Wait. Replay it. And then go to my end step. I'm not sure if this turn was optimal, but seems okay and then exile their uro because i don't want them to i don't want them to be able to uro really and then i have to sack the token but that's okay put a colonnade into play okay looks sweet now they have to kind of deal with scarab god again And they, they have to do something to this, which they don't have any answer for right now. Otherwise, I just get to ult this. And then that's going to be pretty hard for the opponent to beat. Both of us without that many cards left in library. I think this deck is good, but I don't, I mean, this is nowhere near like the best deck I've ever, ever had or anything. Again, we have like a lot of basics. Our mana is not that great. We don't have a lot of fetches or duels. And we have a ton of five drops in our deck. But we have like a lot of the best five drops. All right, they're drawing another card. But it's one they already know about because they put it back with the library. So that's fine. Oh, they can exchange control of target artifact or creature you control with power three or less oh, they're just plusing on scarab god yep sure so their oko's at six but now i can counsel the judgment the oko and they can't counter anything because of three fairy and they have five minutes left to win this game and the next game opposition Okay, that's good. I don't know how good it is at this stage though. Opponent's deck is sweet. <laughs> Their deck is dope. That makes sense why they're playing like Slinging and uh, Deranged Hermit, Whisperwood. Those are all good with opposition. They have a dope bug deck. But again, can they win this game and the next game in time? No way. And they have to, they can't tap down my stuff and deal damage to Kai Fairy. So I have to decide now dismember the sower. All right. Choose target player? What? Oh, target player. You do have to target them. They lose one life and I gain one life. Sack a goblin. Sacrifice it to its own ability? Yes. Yeah, and then they can't deal with my five fairy, which I'm just going to ult. Just to be safe. And then I think I'm even just... 
that I need to have opposition for a turn, I'll probably just try to counsel judgment the Opil. Charge counter. And I can also get my worm coil down, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is looking fine. If I get to alt this, that, I mean, how can they really beat that? I mean, again, I've said it like four times. I don't, I don't think they can win this match. Skydiver just for fun. I can't draw any cards this turn, but I still think it's worth it to ult. Just add white. Oh, wait, let's just ult first, just to make sure I can. And again, they can't respond to anything because of three fairy. So they'll probably just salt off in the chat in a second. They can opposition, but that's all they can do. Oh, they think I'm going to exile the opposition, but I'm actually just going to exile the, the Oko, I think. They're tapping down my creatures so they can try to kill my three fairy. Maybe I am supposed to kill opposition this turn and then not play Worm Coil. Oh, they're, oh they tapped down this. Whoops. Should have floated a mana. Uh, if I kill Opposition, again, then I don't want to play Worm, but then I can just play Thieving Skydiver Pass, and then on my next draw step, I exile the Uro. Yeah, let's just do this. Then plus the Fairy, play Skydiver, take Simic Signet. They have to vote for opposition. Again, maybe that's wrong. Maybe I was supposed to exile Uro or Oko. Opponent's probably just gonna salt out in the chat or let themselves time out. But the good news is they've used so much time, they can't sit there for 10 minutes uh in VM while I uh and wait like and like not let me win basically. that I'm not going to play the worm coil because then they can elk it so I think that's all I can do um I guess they can still attack this but they can't actually no they can just veraska it whatever yeah, I don't want. I, I want to next turn exile their Oko with my Teferi emblem, and then uh, play Worm Coil after that. I think now just to save time, and I can't really do anything. Now I'll just F six. Put the time pressure on the opponent too. Sweatshirt. So the song's getting kind of cold. But they've harassed them to ferry. That's fine. Oh, they make a food. Oh, they, they tireless tracker. And then they make a food. Oh, they're, they're swinging in. Alright, I think I just. Do I block? I think I'll just block just this, take four, keep my flyer around. Seems good for pressuring planeswalkers. And then I'll just exile Oko, and then I'll kill Verasco with Skydiver. And then I can I can play Worm Coil too, and I can just even start attacking with everything. Exile this, add mana, blue, 
four, five, six, worm coil, land, activate, attack Varaska, attack the opponent, attack the opponent. That's it. And I still actually have enough mana to activate Colony it again. But not much else to say here. This this is pretty much game. 47 seconds. This is game two. Opponent's deck was good. I mean, this wasn't necessarily a good matchup for us. They have a lot of Planeswalkers. They have Uro. Opposition, which can be annoying. But no reason for me to talk smack to the opponent. Just let them salt off by themselves, and we'll move on. We'll go round three. It is pretty nice, though. Deck is good. Okay, I don't know if they conceded or they timed out and there was lag or what, but... Nice, 2040. Let's go for the clean 6030 or 3060, however you want to call it. Let's do this. I think blue white control is my most winningest deck of Vintage Cube throughout its history. I've drafted blue white control a lot, and I think it's the best archetype. I just consistently do well with it. Not that you want to necessarily force it, um, but. I think if you lean that way and it's open, it's really, really good. The sand looks fine. We draw another island. We have a turn three cryptic or sower. If we draw a plains, we have a turn two, three fairy, and we have a log. In the finals here, let's see if we can have a less grueling match and just go a little bit quicker, but I guess we are on blue white, so that's for it, right? I'll just play this. I like to play it out, make it seem like maybe I have mana leak or something like that. Also, I do like uh, to try to play relatively quickly in the early game and get ahead on time. Uh, I think that's a good strategy in Magic Online. Okay, we need to draw land. So it's looking kind of rough here. Planes would be ideal. Island's not bad. Okay, we really need planes. So they tap swamp, swamp. Interesting. May have to just cash in our Teferi, especially if we draw planes. Planes? Dark Slick Shores. Okay, well, we do have Cryptic up. I can also just actually just sower their pack rat right now, and then I can start pack ratting maybe. I guess they could have removal for my seller, but that's not too bad, right? I guess they could also have a counter spell, but let's just go. Seller, so blue black control mirror. Ah, figured they might have that. And they get to loot with Brawl. Jeez. Discard Gristlebrand? No. Answer Reanimator. I guess that makes sense why they have pack rat. Are they gonna discard? It's actually fine if they discard here. We have to just draw white white, and we have a good amount of white sources. Okay, that's nice. So now, do I want to leave up cryptic, or do I want to just jam like a? To fairy time raveler bounce the token that seems good to me that slows them down a lot buys me a lot of time i draw a card yeah let's go they could have mana leak here they don't bounce the token draw still need to draw another white source asking you shall receive let's go 
You know, if a fairy gets taken out, they might make another rat, and then I just get to wog. But I might want to even just wait at this point. I'm not under that much pressure, like my life total. And I want to leave up Cryptic. I don't want them to get Bristlebrand back. Hmm. Interesting. Snapcaster Mage. One, two, three, four, five. Six mana. So if I play Teferi, I'll only have three mana up from the untapped lands. So that doesn't seem ideal. I mean, I feel like if they had a way to reanimate Gristlebrand, they would have already done it. So I think it's safer just to Wrath right now and then uh, leave up Cryptic moving forward. And once I get one more mana, then I can play Teferi and then have Cryptic up at end of turn. So... Factor fiction. Okay, it's not ideal. Ugh. Yeah, I guess I just have to give them just Mind Twist or a bunch of lands and a force. Because if they even just take Mind Twist now, they basically get my hand. And I don't really want that to happen. So I'd rather them have a million mana and a force of negation than me not having a hand. So. Right, they took all the lands. I guess they I was gonna say maybe needed more blue mana, but oh they have a five fairy. Okay, well good news is we have this. Oh they have a force negation. Damn. This is looking pretty sketchy actually. Now do I go for ECD. Oops. Cass's multi kicker one. Do I go for ECD or Teferi? I think I go for ECD first. Hope they don't have a, a blue card. Probably do. Yeah. This game kind of took a turn for the worse. I think it's a reasonable matchup for us though. The problem is they're kind of like Esper Control. Yeah, with like a slight reanimation package probably. They might just have like Gristlebrand and like one or two reanimate spells and a couple of discard outlets. And they mostly just play Esper Control or Blue-Black Control and uh, reanimate sometimes. Now them having the Jace also is probably just too much. I have to just go for it. I'll probably just try to tuck their Teferi. Uh, they have a Jace though. Right, I have to just draw. They can try to tuck my Teferi. Ooh, Time Warp. Time Warp plus Snapcaster Mage. Okay, we might be able to we might be able to get there, especially with Cryptic up here. Vamp Tutor resolves. I'm gonna Cryptic whatever they vamp for. I guess they could vamp for a counterspell. This is a cool matchup. Cryptic successfully up. They vamped for most likely a reanimate spell, is my guess. They're drawing cards like crazy with Teferi plus Jace. But if I'm able to untap like Cryptic something and then go like untap, time warp, and then draw a card, and then snap time warp, draw another card. I get, might just be able to get there. Snapcaster time warp package is sick. Okay, put it third from the top. I can't respond to that. I could like cryptic bounce my Teferi, but that just seems awful. I still might need to just start taking a bunch of turns. 
Grave Titan. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So now do I go Cryptic Counter Bounce Jace? I think so. Counter Target Spell, Return Target Permanent, because they haven't used Jace yet. So now they don't get to use Jace. And then I might be able to even like Snap Cryptic the Jace or something. Spell Pierce. Brutal. That was brutal. Okay. And then they get to Jace Brainstorm. Spell Pierce. Jesus. <laughs> Opponent, this, this matchup looks rough. Spell Pierce, Force Negation, Miscalculation, Mind Twist, Teferi, Jace, and, a, and some Reanimate Package. That's, that's a lot to deal with. Okay, so I have five, six, seven, eight mana. I wish I had nine mana. I guess I'll just time warp. Might as well, right? At least get back to our Teferi. Can snap time warp. May have wanted to wait on this, but I just don't think I really have that luxury. Take another turn. There's the Teferi. Let's play it. I think I plus. Could tuck something, but I don't know if that's really a winning line. Untap. I might just have to vent it with the Grave Titan. Problem is they get to recast it, but... Ancestral Vision? Sure. Oh, I just clicked through attacks. Damn. What are, what are these attacking? They're all attacking Teth. So I think... I think what I do is I just go block Grave Titan now that I didn't tap that I didn't bounce it earlier and just leave Venser and have Teth go to one and then just try to somehow win. I don't think it's gonna happen though. I've already used my Wrath. They have a million zombies. They're down to 13 cards in library, but I mean they're obviously able to win the game. Oh, this deck looks good. Recurring Nightmare. So if I Vents or Bounce it, they just replay it. Nothing I can do. They can get Crystal Brand back here. Jeez, opponent is doing the thing. I'll try to bounce Crystal Brand. But they can even just cast it now. They have 8 mana. Alright, let's just try to vent her and then move on to game two because we are going to lose this one. <laughs> the 3 0 6 dream is dead. But the 3 0 dream is still alive. We can win this matchup. Oh, they drew. Did they draw seven? Yeah. I wonder if I bring in Brain Freeze in this matchup. Just to Brain Freeze like a bunch of cards out of the library might be enough. Maybe not. All right. We just weren't quite able to get on top of that game. Ms. Merrick Fiend also seems decent. I didn't see that much actual removal. I just saw a lot of like counter spells from the opponent. 
Also, lapse of certainty might not be bad. I mean, I know they have a reanimate package, but if there's just like a counter war and then I just brain freeze them, I don't know if they're going to have enough cards in library to win necessarily. It's bad in the matchup. Maybe Thieving Skydiver doesn't have enough targets. Wrath of God was decent, but I don't know how good it is overall. Fractured Identity is insanely good. Maybe the opponent has a Fractured Identity as well, and Scare of God is exactly where we want to be. I could bring in Fiend. I can't cast it that well. I could bring in a Swamp and try to cast Fiend. Or I could bring in Brain Freeze and Lapse of Certainty. I don't know. I don't think this is actually right. But I'm going to do at least Brain Freeze because I think it's uh, fun. <laughs> and it would be fun to get them like that. All right. I mean, we need one land. We got the tech. <laughs> we got the tech. Let's go. We need to draw land. Ancestral Vision. Sure. Oh, no. Please, no. <laughs> 16 lands left, we have 30% or 50% chance. Duress. <laughs> they see the brain freeze. <laughs> do they take Tef 5 or do they take Council's Judgment or Coalition Relic? I would probably take Coalition Relic out of this hand. Yeah. Opponent agrees. Nice, we just snap off island like it's nothing. And then we snap off two or three more lands in a row, please. They're all, sure. I'm not gonna brain freeze them yet. Mana leak, that's a good draw. Do I counsel judgment that? No. Oh, so they're, st they're stuck on lands. Hopefully they don't have a land Oh, they do. So let's say then I can mana leak the ancestral, but now I can't. If they play anything, I'm probably just gonna have to leak it. They don't. Okay, land was obviously great. Yeah, I can't mana leak the ancestral, so that sucks. We know they have spell pierce and miscalc. Oh, factor fiction. I have to mana leak. What do I do? I want to brain freeze right now as well for nine. It's not a bad time to do it. it sucks that I put Gristlebrand into the yard, but I think this is decent. Just like because it's a good use of my mana. Just gonna brain freeze them for nine. I hope it's good. <laughs> it might just be really bad because they might just be able to re they, if they have like, I was gonna say if they have recurring nightmare in hand, but I hit recurring nightmare plus grave titan plus crystal brand and by a fairy. So let's hope they don't have more reanimate spells in their deck. <laughs> I might have just like allowed them to reanimate. Jace, okay, I can judgment that. Don't they know about this? They put a card on bottom, maybe it was a land. Another land, and then I just get to ECD this, please? They have 16 cards left. Land, Ancestral Vision, okay, it's not bad. Do they have Force of Negation? Yeah. Pitch Spell Pierce. Now they're going to try to find another counter. Suspend my own Ancestral Vision. Go. Wow, they're just going for the plus Jace. They have another counter spell? 
We've already seen Spell Pierce, Miscald, and Forest Dawn. Land? They put a card on bottom. Maybe it was another land. Land? Nice. Alright, I think I just go for ECD. I know they can make a pack rat here. But okay, we don't have any more counters. So if they have another land, they can hit for a lot. They can hit for eight and nine damage. Okay, it's a tap land. So they can only hit for seven. Okay. Oh, I cited out Wrath of God. That may be a mistake. My Ancestral Vision on two. So if I Tef minus on Pack Rat, then they go draw, mate two rats, kill me. Right? All right. Tef minus on Pack Rat. Oh no, then they only hit for nine. So that's definitely the line, because then if they kill Teferi, I get it back with ECD, and then I time warp. So, yeah, let's go. Let's hope I didn't math wrong. They also could have a white source for Colonnade for H9. No, that doesn't do it either. So this is actually looking good, because again, Activate pack rat twice, then they're four fours, and then they they have eight power, nine power. They can hit me down to one or kill Teferi. But if they kill Teferi, I just get it back with ECD anyway, and then I can time warp next turn. The brain freeze hasn't really done anything. It was kind of just like I mean it did mill them, so they have less cards in the library to win, but yeah, it's still going to be rough. Attack me with everything. It makes sense because they know I'm just going to get this back anyway. They make one pack rat. And did they make another? It should probably hit me to one. Okay, they hit me to three. If they have a counter spell for this, I'm just super dead. Scarab God. It's time warp. Then I get the Ancestral Vision. If I don't have the Wrath of God. It's Ancestral Vision myself. Draw some way to get out of this. This is a lot of good stuff. Wonder if this will be enough. They can make another pack rat. Feels like it will not be enough. Number of rats you control on a mat three. Okay. So I think I'm supposed to treachery the untapped pack rat to have a blocker. So what? Do I want to lead on that? Yeah, I can't lead on three fairy because I don't have enough mana. So I'll lead on this. I might actually, I might have actually done it. Untap all my lands. I can't cast the Scarab God. I can't activate Pack Rat, which kind of sucks. But what I can do is go the fairy bounce the token. And then I can Venser, bounce the other token. Oh, Sower? Sower's great. Because I can... Or Sower worse than Venser? I feel like Sower might be worse than Venser. Because I can Sower next turn. I think, I, I think I've done it, though. So they're going to make a rat end of turn, and then on their upkeep, 
I can Venser. Wait, then I might die to Colonnade if they draw White Source. So maybe I do want to just Sower. Sower take the Pack Rat right now. Then they can make a Rat in response. All right. This this does play around uh, White Source for Colonnade. Because I can block with Sower. Take this rat, they can make a rat. They don't, okay. So I have double pack rat now. Unfortunately, I don't have this lapse of certainty up. Okay. So this pack rat is attached to this sower. I don't know why I put my treachery in the middle of these two. But it did. O ring. Alright, well, there's nothing I can do. They O ring my Teferi. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah, they can't respond to any spells because I have three fairy out. So this is actually looking decent. Because now I can even Venser Bounce O-Ring and then Lapse of Certainty it, and that kind of locks them out. Island. Right, let's plus this. I think I want to go, yeah, I think I want to go Venser Bounce O-Ring. Just because I already have the Lapse for it. Putting O-Ring on top seems good. I just get to draw more cards. Could also minus, but I think I just draw. And I can't attack yet because I still could draw white source. Could attack with both of these. I think that's fine. Does, that doesn't matter too much. And now I can block with Colonnade too, potentially. Yeah, this, this is looking good. I can't believe I like, might actually win this game. I think I'll I think I'll probably take the brain freeze out for the third game. Marari conjecture. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. I think I'll just lapse it. This is the first time I've ever cast this card. Might be the last too. <laughs> okay, they have a lapse of certainty on top of their deck. So now we know they can't draw white source, so that actually matters. Can't cast Tooth Member. Plus this. Plus this. Call a Fracture Identity. So we know they're gonna draw and play Mirari Conjecture, and they can get back Vamp, Tutor, Duress, no, they get back Instance, so they can get back, yeah, Vamp, Tutor is actually an Instant, right? Yeah, they can get back Vamp, Tutor, they can get back Force, Factor Fiction, nothing seems that scary, actually. Because I can let them have that, and then I can Fractured Identity it. I can even do this at Instant Speed. Just wonder if I want to attack with Colonnade. I think not. Let's just play this tapped. And then what do I want to attack with? Just these two? I think that's a conservative line. I have a good number of black sources too, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm not able to activate or play Scarab God. Okay. So now I can let Mirari Conjecture resolve, and then in response to the trigger, I can Fracture Identity up. 
and then get back even brain freeze. So I let it resolve. See what they target. They target factor fiction. Um, okay. Sure, that resolves. They can't cast it right now anyway. I guess, can they play land? No. Yeah, this is over. Fracture identity this. This is sweet. Get back brain freeze. Got him. <laughs> okay. Maybe I do want brain freeze. I mean, that was only storm three and I almost kind of milled them out. And if I can go like storm four or five, I actually just like win. The problem is I got kind of lucky to mill like their reanimate and a lot of their their win cons. And maybe I want the wrath considering they have the, the pack rat. Nice just to be able to draw into it. Maybe I just win with my planeswalkers, but this is this is tempting. I don't think I actually want fiend. Maybe I don't need dismember. Just keep the plow and wrath of God instead of dismember and keep the brain freeze. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick and then I'll be back for game three. Right, game three, we have a turn one ancestral, but I don't think we can keep this even on the draw. We have a signet as well. Man, it's tempting. But yeah, I think we have to mull. Oh man, do we really have to go to five? I mean, we're on the draw, so we have 17 mana sources left. Out of 33, we draw one mana source. We might be okay. I think I have to keep this actually. I don't want to go to five. That's just too much. So I'll keep this and I can put back a Venser or a Time Warp. Time Warp seems good. Oh wait, I could just put back Brain Freeze. I'll put back Brain Freeze. I'll maybe Shuffle will draw that later. I was thinking like earlier that I actually don't want Brain Freeze in my opening hand. I'd rather have it later. And there's land. Nice. Okay. So we might be okay. And then they just drew Ancestral. That's fine. Another land. Perfect. Perfect. This is why I kept this hand. Because if we drew lands, this hand is actually good. Especially with like three fairy in this matchup. Oh, if we get to three fairy and keep it in play. Oh, it looks like we might. It looks like we might. Okay. So I have options here. I I can go. I can go play a land. Play a chalice on one. Play a three fairy bounce for all. That keeps my three fairy pretty safe. I can also not play chalice and just play three fairy plus a tap land. Um, I don't, I think I like getting the chalice down. I don't think I need to um, play it bigger than one. So let's go for that. Let's chalice with multi kicker for one. They could have force of negation here. Seems like they do, but I don't think I can necessarily play around that. Okay, maybe they don't. <laughs> and then I bounce Baral, right? Oh, the, oh no, then they can attack with Shambling Vent. Damn. So they would have to have a Black Source, which they obviously have a ton of in their deck. If I plus a Fairy though, then I think I'm a little bit safer. All right, I'm going to do that. Because then if they go Black Source, swing it to Fairy for three, I'm actually fine, because then I can untap and have Venser up. I just need to Fairy and play, like when this Ancestral Vision... Oh, no. They couldn't activate Vents. Because of... Uh, they didn't have Black and White. Damn. I was thinking, like, 
Did it cost blue light or something to activate? Jace. Okay. Brainstorm. It's obviously good. But it's beatable, it's beatable. All right, they brainstorm and they attack to fairy for one. And hopefully we draw like a five fairy or something. We have a lot of good five drops. ECD would be fantastic. Lapse of certainty, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Lapse actually might not be that bad. So now I can actually go bounce this, draw, and then uh, shock and hallowed fountain, leave up Venser, and then that way if they threaten to attack, I can just bounce the shambling event with Venser and attack Jace. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. So I don't quite have both of these up, but I think I like this. Should have bounced his last turn. I just thought they could activate this for some reason. Oh, Mana Leak. Mana Leak's actually good. Do I want a Time Warp? I'm going to shock this in anyway. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, six mana. Actually, I only have six mana. I don't have Venser plus Leak up. I don't think I want to time warp this turn. I I'd rather time warp with the Venser in play. This is obviously looking good. They have to deal with this Teferi this turn. I have a bunch of counters, and uh, otherwise their Ancestral gets stuck. I mean, they can win without that. They have a Jace going, but my hand is good. Okay, this is perfect. So I let them attack, and then I Venser bounce it. And then I can attack Jace twice because I have a time warp. Wait. You always have to, you have to tap Signet first. Nice. We got him. Got the 3 0. The Brain Freeze deck didn't really do much. I mean, technically it won that game, but we'd probably win game two anyway. I was shocked we were able to win game two there. It was a good draw off Ancestral Vision. But this is youtube.com slash natbolt. My name's Max. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time.